Rising pollution and an unprecedented scale of global warming has lately made us realize the importance of a healthy environment. The smoke from factories, vehicles, chimneys, etc., have degraded the air quality to such an extent that, only stern action can bring it in control. It is in this context that people say, electric vehicles are the future. By eliminating the dependence on fossil fuels such as petrol, diesel, and coal, which do severe harm to the society, these EVs, or as one might say electric vehicles, offer a ray of hope in the direction of a better environment. While it is not incorrect to say that EVs are certainly the future, it is also necessary to address some important issues that surround the functioning of these EVs. Without addressing these problems effectively, the transformation would be really difficult. One of the problems that we are going to discuss in this video is charging of these electric vehicles. So let's begin. Researchers have shown that consumers want their electric cars to charge, from empty to full, in 31 minutes. But unfortunately, we aren't even close. The base model Chevy Volt EV is incapable of fast charging because it does not have the technology for it, and even the upgraded, more expensive model that does allow for fast charging can only get to 39% state of charge in 31 minutes. The Nissan Leaf does a little better, attaining 62% state of charge in 31 minutes, while the base model Tesla Model 3 does the best, with its ability to fill its battery to 83% in the most ideal conditions, using the fastest models of Tesla superchargers, but again that would only give it 196 miles, or 315 kilometers of range, even in the most ideal conditions. Moreover, in colder weather, it gets more problematic as the charging time would increase, and the range would be lesser. Now, a standard iPhone charging inverter outputs 5 watts of electricity, which is plenty enough to charge the phone's 11 watt hour battery in a few hours. In comparison, a base model Tesla Model 3 has a 50 kilowatt hour battery, which is 4,500 times larger than that of iPhone. Therefore, it needs a much higher wattage power inverter to charge with any speed. In simple words, if you need more electricity faster, you need a higher wattage inverter. So, in order to be able to charge a Tesla Model 3, from almost empty to almost full in approximately 30 minutes, you will need an inverter whose power is somewhere between 120 to 250 kilowatt. The only problem here is that, a 250 kilowatt inverter costs, at least in this case, $57,600, and is about the size of a very large refrigerator. Now that's practically not feasible for a lot of us. Another issue with the EV charging is that, batteries charge slower with increasing charge. So this means that the first 20% will charge much faster than the last 20%. Now, it is actually faster to charge to 50%, then drive until empty, then again charge to 50%, and again drive until empty in comparison to charging 100% and driving to empty. A Tesla Model 3 can go from 0 to 50% charge in 15 minutes on a 250 kilowatt charger, giving it enough range to drive at least 100 miles or 160 kilometers, while charging from 50% to 90% would take an additional 27 minutes. So, combining two charges from empty to 50% in two stops, you could effectively reach your destination in 31 minutes with existing 250 kilowatt charges. Therefore, what the industry needs is not faster charges, but more charges, which is hugely difficult given the enormous cost of fast charges. Now, the next problem is distance. The average American lives 4 minutes away from a gas station, and the same American lives 31 minutes away from their nearest Tesla supercharger. Currently, there are 976 supercharging stations in the US, each of which have anywhere between 2 and 56 individual charges. In order to match the 4-minute average of gas stations, Tesla would need to build an additional 31,251 supercharging stations. Now, the cost of building one of these supercharging stations is $250,000.
At this cost, the company will have to spend nearly $7.8 billion, which is roughly 10 times their total annual profits from 2020. Moreover, only some 750,000 Teslas have ever been sold in the US, which means that in order to have fast charging stations, as accessible as gas stations, the company would need to install a $250,000 supercharging station for every 23 cars it had on the road. What we understand here is that, you surely need the infrastructure to sell cars, but you can't build the infrastructure until you sell the cars. Interestingly, Europe is almost identical in size to the US, and has a very similar number of electric cars overall, but it has double the number of charging stations, than the US. Do you know why? Because of coordinated government plans. For example, Germany's federal government builds its own charging stations, and also offers strong incentives for private companies to do so. Meanwhile, the federal government in the US has done very little, to incentivize the construction of fast chargers, and it certainly does not have a network of its own. However, it is also true that, the US federal government wants people to buy EVs, because it offers hefty tax credits to those who do so. But what needs more attention is the fact that, people are not going to buy EVs without the charging infrastructure to support it. Electric vehicles are comparable in cost to internal combustion cars, and even their range is somewhere near to the consumer's demand, but what's missing is the charging infrastructure. Moreover, this isn't even an exclusively American problem. In Australia, one can't drive from Perth to Sydney in an EV, due to a massive charging gap, while in Russia, despite similar incentives for EV purchases, there are a total of only 24 fast chargers in the entire country. Surprisingly, there are roughly 15 electric cars for every one public charging station. Even in the most mature electric car market, that is California, you will still see a 10 to 1 ratio. These numbers don't reflect that nearly 95% of these public chargers are level 2 chargers, which means that, it'll take about 8 to 12 hours to fully charge a Tesla. In a developing economy like India, where the population is huge, EVs have just started to take off with little to no infrastructure, to support the development. Imagine when electric cars actually do become mainstream, how Herculean a task it would be, to build a public network that works the way people are used to. Given the awful state of our environment, the impending climate change, and the dire need of radical transformations, we have a very genuine question to ask here. Well, governments run and regulate roads, bridges, tunnels, railways, airports, dams, sewers, water supply networks, and even fuel supply systems. Why? Obviously because they are infrastructure, and infrastructure is essential. But then, why not charging? That was all about EVs. Do like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel, Explified.